1934, the Glowworm Boiler and Fireplace Company started producing boilers in Derbyshire in England. In 1963, they produced the first balanced flue boiler and in 1968, Glowworm introduced the world to the bat boiler Mallorca. In 1971, they also produced the world's first cast iron, wall hung, balanced flue boiler, the Space Saver. Didn't really save any space though. In 1992, Glowworm produced their first condensing boiler and in 2001, they became part of the Valent Group. In 2014, they were also the first to introduce automatic gas safe registration through their app. Now the boiler we're going to be looking at today is this one what's behind me, which is the Glowworm CXI30, which was introduced in 2005 and was upgraded in 2012. Now, before you do any work on a boiler, first thing is you must be gas safe registered and if you are a gas safe engineer make sure you follow the safe isolation procedure before going into the electrical side making sure you use your non-contact voltage indicator before you touch the appliance to make sure it's not live because you don't want to be ending up dead so let's get on with it now this isn't the original flu of this boiler or the original turret what came with the boiler. Now I'm going to show you a little video of how this uh, flue was installed on this boiler. So you can see here the actual whoever installed this uh, this boiler actually used bricks to uh, support the flue in a boxing in. So this is very important why you should always check flues when they've been boxed in. So what we had to do is we've replaced the boiler and we've replaced the full flue system and you can see we've used new clips, we've sealed all the walls and we've secured the flue like it should be. So let's have a look at this turret. So you can see the original turret didn't have the flue integrity test point. So this is our flue gas analyzer test point. And the bottom part is the flue integrity. So this is your flue integrity. So you can see this turret can turn around by the use of the screws. So it's not a fantastic idea when they put the actual flue integrity and flue gas analyzer test points on the flue elbow themselves. They're far better when they're installed down at the front here so you can actually turn the flue 360 degrees. So that's all what's on the top. Just the flue and the turret. Now you can see this is the clamp and again this has got screw holes here. Now this should be screwed on the glowworms, valent boilers, they should be screwed. Some manufacturers say they are visual holes to make sure the flue's gone full socket. But for the glowworm and valent, they must be screwed. So that's how they clamped on. That's basically it at the top. So let's get this cover off and let's have a look inside. Now remove the cover. Now this boiler we only took out yesterday. So this boiler was working up until yesterday. Again, like I've just said, it was in a rented property. So you can see why this boiler was changed. It wasn't actually working on central heating. It was working on water, but not central heating and been condemned by the engineer who did the landlord report. So you can see this is the water set. Now it's very close in this boiler, there's not a lot of working room. So I've actually got one of these water sets taken out of an old boiler and we'll use that when we're looking closely at the water set. So let's look from the top. So we can see now we've got the full stainless steel Giovanni, Giovanni, I never know how to say that word, heat exchanger. So you can see the combustion chamber is held on by these screws here, which is slightly different. There are five. One, two, three, four, five. Where on, where's the fifth one? Yeah, there. Where the valent one only has four screws. So they are completely different boilers. So if we come down, we can see this is the gas valve and this is our fan. The slots you can see here is where the air comes in from combustion. There's our HT lead, our earth cable, and you can see the condensate trap down at the back. 
and the big red thing you can see here is our expansion vessel. So if we look at the turret, you can see where the air comes in and you can see where the products of combustion come through on this plastic um, flue system here. And this is one of the problems with these boilers is they split at the back for these plastic chambers. So um, a lot of the time when you get water down at the bottom here, it's because that plastic at the back of the heat exchanger is split. So this is a 30 kilowatt boiler. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, combustion chamber. Look at this graphite seal and have a closer look at the heat engine itself and the heat exchanger. So let's get on with that now. Now, first thing I'm going to remove is a HT lead. So it's basically pull it off and the earth cable. Okay, now there are a few wires we need to disconnect. We need to disconnect the gas valve one and we also need to disconnect the fan one. Okay, so those wires are off there. Now, to hold the um, gas connection in, there is a clamp down the bottom here. So basically, you have to pull this clamp off. So it's just that clamp. Okay, what holds onto the, the gas supply there. Now, all we need to do now is, we need to take off these four, uh, five nylock nuts using our 10mm ratchet. Okay. These uh, five nylock nuts will need to be replaced every time this burner door is removed. And the burner door will need to be checked to see whether it's warped every time it's removed also. Should happen is now we should be able to pull this slightly forward then we have to lift it out because we need to lift it off the gas connection there. So that is our heat engine. We're gonna have a closer look at that and oh my word we're gonna have a closer look inside here. Now, like I've been saying, this came out of a rented property. It was installed in 2006, and it doesn't look like this has ever come off, because mm, it's in pretty bad condition. Okay, so let's get a closer look. So if we look at the data badge on this boiler, we can see its serial number says 21 first. That means it was made in Belper in Derbyshire in the UK. The 06 is the year it was made, 2006. And the 12 is the 12th week of the year. So we can see it is a 30 CXI, so it's a 30 kilowatt. But I did say I didn't think it had been opened since it was installed, but there is a G10 sticker. So this means the seal on the burner door has been changed and it was changed on the 16th of the 4th, 2010. So that probably was the last time this burner door was opened up. So that's how you tell the age of these glowworms. Now we've removed the heat engine, you can see inside the heat exchanger, you can see all the debris. You can see this hasn't been looked after very well okay so landlord reports they also remember guys need to be serviced so down at the bottom here the hole you can see here this is where the condensate comes through and you can see that there is a gasket what you must change when you uh, take this off as well so now the heat engine's out you can see the gas connection you can see the o-ring here now again, this should be lubed up and you can see the actual rubber bung has come out. So you must always make sure that that rubber bung is put back in again before you put your gas connection back on. We can now see the condensate trap closely. Once you remove the uh, cap from the top, you can see there is a float inside there which gets stuck a lot of the time, so needs to be cleaned regularly. Now, the um, expansion vessel, 
The Shrider valves down the side here. If you have a look at our inside the boiler casing on the valent boiler, you can see how I remove this, which is pretty much the same. Okay, the only difference is there is a clamp down at the bottom. To the left of the heat exchanger are the NTCs with the high limit start being at the top. You can see it is a reset. You manually, manually reset this by pressing the red button inside. And you've got the NTCs down here at the bottom on the flow and return pipe. I'm going to show you how you're going to test those later. So that's looking inside the combustion chamber. So here's the burner. So you can see this burner is made of stainless steel. And the length of this burner depends on the size of the kilowatts of the boiler itself. So you can see now we've got the insulation. You can see this insulation is in a pretty bad state. So this insulation will need to be removed. You can also see the gasket going around the burner door, which will also need to be replaced. Now you can see the spark electrode and the gap in the spark electrode is between 3.5 and 4.5 millimetres normally. Down here you can see the gasket will need to be replaced every time you take the door off again. This is the seal to seal off where you can see into the bottom of the heat exchanger for the condensate. If we flick it over you can see where the HT lead goes on and you can see there's a little window in there. Now most of the boilers now don't have this little window because it makes it a tiny little bit more efficient. This is the blending tube where the gas and the air is mixed before it goes to the burner. Now you can see the fan and the gas valve. So this down here is the test point, your inlet test point. This one is useless because it just gives you a minus figure. We, we don't get any readings from the manufacturers from that. And you can see where we can adjust our COCO2 ratio. And again, you can see the clip down at the bottom here where it just clips onto the gas pipe. So that is a quick look at the burner. Now let's have a closer look down at the water set and we'll use this one I've taken out from a previous boiler. Now, as always on inside a boiler casing, let's have a look at this pump first. Now you can see this pump is a 1560. That means it's a six meter head pump. If it said 1570, then it would be seven meter head. And you can see the pump is just held on with four Allen screws. So there's two at the top and two at the bottom. Just at the back here is the connection for the return pipe which goes from the pump to the heat exchanger. And just to the left of this connection is the automatic air vent. Then we have our cold water inlet pipe and this thing you can see here is our filter for the cold water coming into the boiler. And that's filtering the water before it goes into the flow turbine which operates a diverter valve and makes it work on hot water. Just at the back there you can see the plate to plate heat exchanger. So the plate to plate is easy to undo and get to but hard to actually get out of the boiler so we'll have a look at that soon. So the pink thing you can see here is our low water pressure sensor pump prover and digital display all in one again like the valent. And this is the original pink colour, They, like I say, if you watch the valent one, you'll see that they were changed to like a black colour. To the left now, you can see the diverter valve motor. Now the diverter cartridge inside here is probably one of the hardest things to work on on this Glowworm CXI. And you can see the clamp actually says yes on it. So if it's upside down, it says S, C, well, whatever it says, <laughs> C, then um, you've got it upside down and it needs to go in that way that's why they put the sticker on there then if we come back to the front you can see the filling loop the internal filling loop so this is how we allow the water into the system so this is the valve to allow it in and if we follow the pipe it goes to this thing which is an rpz valve or reduced pressure zone valve so if you are filling this boiler up and you actually get water 
coming out of this bit here, when you're filling it up, it means the RPZ valve is damaged or if it starts coming out of there then it also means it's damaged so that's the RPZ valve which allowed the through the water rigs to allow the uh, filling loop to stay connected just to the side now of the um, RPZ valve is our three bar pressure relief valve and you can see everything's on clips so you can see how easy everything is to take off, this is the bypass, so and you can see our automatic bypass at the top here. So you can see the pipe works, so that's that other pipe. So you can see everything unclips. So we're going to show you how hard it is to work on this boiler when everything's in situ, because basically the height. So that's a close look at the components down on this uh, Glowworm 30CXI. So let's get back downstairs to the boiler down there and have a close look at that. Now, before we do any work down here on the uh, water set, the easiest thing to do is to remove the side panels from the boiler. Now, there are two screws, one here, one here, and one at the top on either side of the boiler, and then the side panels will come out incredibly easy. Now, it will help you do this. So, first of all, we need to take the little string here off the side panel which is just a matter of getting a little clip through the hole and we can now take out the screws here and here and the one at the top now we're taking out the screws it's just a matter of pulling it to the side and lifting it off easy let's get the other side off This is why the boiler manufacturer says you require, I think it's 10 millimeters or five millimeters either side, so you can actually lift these side panels off. Now we've taken the side panels off, we should be able to get at things down here and remove it easier than we would be trying to get it through the front. Now I think all boilers, uh, before they can be sold in the UK, have to be able to take all their water sets or everything out through the front because not every time you can get down the side but this will help you being able to do that so i'm not going to show you how to remove the pump because that's too easy that's on all the others first thing i'm going to take off is this cold water turbine and get that out okay just remember before you remove any of these parts we must turn off the water and drain it through the taps because this is on the on the water side first of all I'm going to get this filling loop out of the way which is basically a clip here pull that clip out and then it just pulls out and spins out of the way okay making sure we don't ever lose these clips now I'm going to take this filter out here and just show you how hard this can be or how easy, because I've never taken it out before. Now, just going to get some grips. <laughs> it came off. It's actually been greased up that, so somebody has taken that off not long ago. And then the filter is inside here. There's the sealing O-ring. This is all greased up, so I don't know if you can see all that grease on there, but somebody's greased it up. Must have been the guy who condemned it up. This is just full of grease in here. So that's the filter. Okay. So now, to get this part out of the way, I need to take this clamp out at the bottom here. Now to do that, there is a slot in here. And we can just pull it out of the way. So, but what that does is, it pulls the pipe connection off down at the bottom. So I'm just going to undo these two nuts here, which you can't see. And then pull the section out at the bottom. Again, this is all greased up, so I'm assuming this has been stripped before we actually came to it. So, now all it is, is if I take the clip off at the back here, 
the old lot should come out. So, the full flow turbine has come out. Okay, that's how easy that is to get out. So now it's out, let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. So this is where the water comes in here. And this is where the, that filter is. So if I pull that pin out, pull that out, you can now see the filter. Now you can see the flow turbine is all in one part. This is the wire what we just disconnected to take it out. So if I take this pin out here, this now comes off, there's an O-ring on there. And inside there, you can just see that white thing is the actual paddle. So as the water's passing through, it spins that paddle, which makes the Hall effect sensor in there work, which allows the diverter valve to come on. So you can just see it inside there. I can't make it spin but without blowing through it, but there you go. So that's what the Hall effects sensor looks like in the flow turbine. Again, to get the low water pressure sensor out, that's incredibly easy. It's just a clip which we can pull out. Next one I want to look at is what I think is the hardest thing to remove on here, which is this diverter valve cartridge. Now I've removed the side panel, I can get at this nut here, okay, to remove the full cartridge. But let's see if we can get it off. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is pull the cable off. So that was easy, he says. All the cables are all wrapped around. Okay, so this boiler was working on hot water, but wasn't working on central heating. So, oh, and what I have just noticed is the clip's missing. Oh, it's in the wrong spot. Yeah, it's been, it's in the wrong spot. So this has actually all been built up in the wrong place. So before I actually take it out, you can see that somebody has built it in the wrong place. So let's have a look at that now. Now you can see, you can't actually see the clip. The clip's there, at the back there. And we haven't got the yes here, so it's in the wrong place. So I'm gonna to have to completely remove this diverter valve cartridge because it's been assembled wrong. Okay, because I'll never be able to get that pin out. I'll try. But, because it's hitting the plate to plate. So, <laughs> so it must have been the engineer who condemned the boiler has taken it apart and then not been able to put it back together again properly. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove all the components out of the way. So, I'm gonna take the RPZ valve out, which is just a matter of undoing the clip, another one of the clips and pulling the RPZ valve out again. So we've got that out, so that's out of the way. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the auto bypass out. So again, it's just another little clip there, another little clip here. And then that will come out. So ooh, we've now taken that out, got her everywhere. Okay, so now what it's doing is, it's leaving me just this nut on this side to take off the plate to plate, and I need to undo the Allen key down at the back here, and I need to undo this pipe here on this side, and then the connection's off underneath. That was quite slack. Not the knot. Not normally that slack. So that's the flow pipe out of the way. So all I need to do now is find some Allen keys so I can undo the plate to plate.
Now, I just remembered it's T20 for the plate to plate, not Allen screws. So, I'm just going to undo that so I can slacken off the, the plate to plate. Okay, now I've undone this nut here, and I just need to do undo the, the T20s down below. So under here, there are two screws. Ugh. One. Two. I'll <laughs> do this off memory. <laughs> I've not even looked in the book yet. Now, normally, if this doesn't come out of here, game over. So there's a, a retaining clip here, which I've taken out. And if we can't get that out, then it ain't coming out. So I've got to try and prise it out. Because this side of the hydro block won't come out until this is out. Oh, it came out! Get in. Okay. Mm, very crusty. So we managed to get that out. So now, all it should be is. Should lift all out. You will come out, you beggar. Okay, so now you know what this slot on the side here is for, so you can pull out the hydro block. He says, <laughs> get the hydro block off, but I can't get the NTC off because it's stuck solid. We'll leave it on then. Okay, so now you can see. Somebody's built it wrong, so I've had to do all that just so I can get that clip out because the plate to plate was stopping it. Okay, Ooh. so finally got the motor head off. Ooh, it's been leaking inside there. So let's strip this and uh, see what the problem's been all along. As promised, I'm going to show you how to check this NTC standing for negative temperature coefficient. Um, so basically, this is a thermistor. And what this does is it reads the temperature and sends a signal in homes back to the PCB. So that can tell the burner whether to uh, the fan to speed up or slow down to give more gas or not. So the way we check these now today is. It's about 30 degrees in this classroom. I've got my little thermometer here. So my little thermometer here and it's reading just under 30 degrees. So we need a chart. So we've got our little chart here which is going to tell us what our home reading should be at a given temperature. Now according to this 30 degrees we were looking at a resistance in homes of 9 uh, 1,786 or around about there. Okay, now because this is a negative temperature coefficient resistor, what it will do is, as the temperature gets hotter, the reading will come lower. So the colder the water is, the higher the reading, the hotter the water is, the lower the reading. So we need a multimeter. And you can see I've set my multimeter on to 20K. I'm just going to check and make sure it works so the screen should change. Okay, so you can see the screen's changing. So we know this is working. So I'm just going to take a reading now on what the temperature is here now. So it doesn't matter which way around you're going, but I'm going to look for these holes I'm trying to. It'd be handy if I had a pair of eyes. So. I've got a reading on my screen of 9.60. 9. So it's 9.62. Okay. And according to my chart for 30 degrees, 9.78. Okay. 
So it's not a million miles out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got a cup of cold water and this reading now is 19.6 in this cold water. 19.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the NTC and I'm going to dip it in the water for a little bit just so it gets the temperature of the water and this should be a different reading and if it's got a different reading then it means this, the uh, NTC is working okay so it's been in there a few seconds now let's not bother about the water and let's take the new reading quickly before it starts to warm up again and we've got a reading of 11.82 and you can now see the reading on the screen is coming down because it's warming up so you can actually see this is working there is nothing wrong with this thermistor at all now you shouldn't really test them while they're on the boiler okay but um, they're dead easy to take off the, the dry pocket and the wet pocket one are exactly the same except you have to get rid of the water out of the boiler first before you check them now this is about one degree out from a wet pocket so what the manufacturer gains in lack of sludge and affecting these they gain in lasting longer um, while they're on the boiler so that's how you check a negative temperature coefficient resistance resistor thermistor, uh, thermistor. and you will need a chart and a multimeter and some way of checking the temperature to be able to do it but if you do get a change in reading then you know it's working now just going to use these grips to take the end off here um, I have slackened them off a little bit so it should come off technically you could do this while it's while it's still in position and technically I could have just taken the, um, the the plate off to get the clip out but I needed to strip it to see what it's looked like anyway because it didn't work so Ooh. so it's not massively dirty so that's how it fits inside and how it works so oh, it's just crusty and not looking good so it looks like it needs completely changing so that pin <laughs> that pin should be loose so that oof, should slide freely inside there so what happens is the motor pushes that in the chamber in there blocking the chambers off and it was stuck solid so as you could see so that just needs a new kit so if it hadn't been for the leak I think inside uh, the boiler as well um, and we found out the flue was completely wrong as well that was pretty bad and that was probably what was causing the leaks coming back into the boiler the landlord just had enough of it it must have cost him a fortune in people stripping it and so that's why we ended up fitting a new boiler yesterday so that's going to need a repair kit as usual let's finish off underneath the boiler so you can see relief valve there this one here is the uh, flow then we've got the hot water out, then we've got gas, then we've got cold, then we've got return. You can also see this is the condensate pipe. 
Now this is a jig. This boiler is actually fitted on a jig. The uh, when they changed them in I think 2012, they stopped using this jig. So we would have another pipe coming off the back here. We can also see the drain point here, which is a great idea. So this is this will drain the boiler off. We can see the water coming off. So that's how we drain this boiler when we were taking it out. And you can see the blue cap here is the internal filling loop. This thing you can see here is the filter on the central heating. It's actually on the return. So to take it out, first of all, we need to remove that clip. Once we remove the clip, we need to get some grips on it. And then we can pull it out. So that's the filter you can see on the central heating return. So to put it back, slides back in. There is a flat so you can push it up and then make sure you don't forget to put the clip back in. Otherwise it'll blow out under the pressure. So that's the underneath side of this um, Glowworm 30 CXI.